Hey gang, welcome back for another episode here on Jochem. In the previous episode, we talked about uh, we had an introduction to ester enolates, and more importantly, we saw them in action uh, doing our first, you know, you know, ester enolate type chemistry in the Claisen condensation. If you haven't checked that video out and you're a little shaky on your Claisen fundamentals, I highly recommend it. Anyways, if you've seen the video, if you feel like a Claisen condensation rock star, well. This is the place for you because we're just going to kind of build on our knowledge and talk about what a retroclase and condensation is. Just basically a little extra bonus, if you will. <clears throat> so, what is a retroclase and condensation? So, when we did talk straight clase and condensation, we talked about the requirement for that proton needed for deprotonation from the carbon between our dicarbonyl. And we need to do that to basically push forward energetically and make sure we don't fall victim to the reversibility of the steps leading up to that point in our reaction. So, for example, we looked at an ester enolate that, oh, not that was not wrong, I just wanted to draw it this way. So we looked at this reaction. So we can clearly see this was an attempted Claisen condensation with the fact that we have an ester. We see our ether section right here as two carbons. That's why we see the ethanol, the ethoxide with the acidic workup. But remember, we talked about the fact that you eventually need two protons at this alpha carbon position. One to become an ester enolate and the second to do that deprotonation of whatever base you end up ejecting so that it gets quenched. And now we're about to see the true importance of what happens when you don't have uh, that step available. So, we know this is no reaction. And again, if you're a little shaky on the clays and condensation, I would recommend watching the video here on Joe Chem for it. But we will get to an intermediate that looks like this. This is right after a tetrahedral intermediate has collapsed and we've ejected this part from the second uh, ester that ends up getting attacked. So, because there's no proton here available to quench this ethoxide, making it ethanol, here's what happens instead. We end up unraveling every, every step we had previously done. They were reversible, so you can absolutely send it in reverse. So, what happens here? We just do everything backwards. We attack the carbonyl that collapsed in our tetrahedral intermediate. Electrons swing up. And O minus over here. I have the newly uh, re-added uh, ether part, the, uh, the ethoxide right there. I'm going to redraw everything as it was. It didn't touch anything over this section. But now, remember, it was at this point, if we were going, if we had a forward mindset, we would be adding, we'd be attacking our carbonyl carbon. But now, I'm basically going to reform my carbonyl carbon, and I'm not ejecting this part, right? I'm actually going to kick off the giant ester enolate part. I should end up with an ester and an ester enolate. And the way those arrows go is that this bond has to break. So we form a carbon-carbon bond, which would be the carbon-carbon bond in our ester enolate, and we end up kicking electrons up like that. So what you end up with is this independent ester right here. This was the electrophile. as well as our original nucleophile, which remember, it's, we have a double bond right here. We have this. We still have this section over here, but don't forget we have two methyl groups, so one, one. And I'm sure this looks familiar. So this is, and this was our nucleophile, so this is what is meant kind of by, now the effects of not having the proton here to quench this base, you see how important it is. Otherwise that base just turns into the, a nucleophile and it just unravels what was supposed to be a 
glaze and condensation. And you can see you just, you know, end up with your starting material back over again. So nothing super complicated, just kind of what we learned backwards. I do want to do one example uh, that I think is kind of fun. So let me erase this. We'll throw it up, call it a video. Okay, gang, so let's look at one more retro clays and condensation example. So if we take a peek at this, you can see given this uh, you know, starting material, this reactant, uh, it, this, is, and this, this is from the textbook Voldhart that Pitt uses. It was observed that if you have this structure, you submit to, you know, no surprise that we see methanol and methoxide because that's kind of the character we see in the ether section of our ester. We get two of these and one of these. So while seemingly confusing, you know, you, you would think if we're doing a retro clays and condensation, we've seen one thing break into two. So if you're given two of these, we would almost expect four things total. A little bit of a head scratcher. So uh, that's what exactly what I thought whenever I looked at this problem. But I think what is important is to just start it, see where it takes you, and then you'll find the aha moment. So I think it's no surprise to see that this fits the bill to be a retroclase because at this position right here, we don't see that there was ever an available proton to kind of quench a base that was floating around. So that base then decided to, you know, play the role of nucleophile. So if we take a look right here, our very first step is to grab a methoxide. Doesn't have any reason to be protonated, to be methanol, so it's going to, you know, commit to that nucleophile life. And it's going to attack right here. Remember, you're going to attack the carbonyl that clearly has evidence of losing its um, OR, right? Like its ethoxide or methoxide, right? So we generate a tetrahedral intermediate. Just added the methoxide up here. Still have this available down here. So right, the tetrahedral intermediate is going to collapse. Remember, we're going to end up with an ester and an ester enolate. So this swings over here, electrons kick up. We end up with, that is this section right here. Instead of drawing the ME, I drew a line, but if, here I can do this to be a little bit more explicit. Redundant, but gets the point across. And then you're also gonna end up with this part right here. You can see this process, this was just the one time through. So if this, ha and then just, just for some cleanup, we do generate this, the acidic workup, We'll clean it up to be this, being a little lazy. But you can see this happens twice, so we can expect two of these and two of these. And if you check really quickly, you can see, oh, we do end up with two of these. So we do end up with a check right here. But we have not demonstrated mechanistically how we end up with this product. However, I hope, I pray that you're saying, Joe, we have two of these esters. We can do a clays and condensation with them. And you're absolutely right. Because if we were to make an ester enolate going this way, you can see we have three hydrogens available. More than enough to generate an ester enolate as well as seal the deal with that last deprotonation step. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of start ahead with my ester enolate. Messy. There we go. I'm going to just draw OME. That's fine. So then we enter in our electrophile, the thing to be attacked. Electrons swing down. Alpha carbon does its thing. Electrons kick up. We form our tetrahedral intermediate. And I keep apologizing. This is technically reversible. So 
right? I'm gonna go ahead and draw this. I always give myself a little bit more room. Oh, not that. O M E. This is my dot carbon. And I know I just bonded to that other dot carbon. Make this a little cleaner. On the dot carbon, I have an O minus. I have an O M E sticking up and a methyl group. The tetrahedral intermediate will collapse. We'll eject our not so great leaving group. But remember, that's okay because we have more than enough protons to go around at this position nestled in between our carbonyls, our dicarbonyl. O-methyl comes back, looking for a proton and we absolutely have one to give. This is supposed to, sorry, on the carbon. Uh, negative charge. And remember, hydronium comes in to save the day, to take us home. And that is how we get the mystery piece to this reverse, or sorry, retro glazing. That piece is this piece. Bring out the pink marker, draw a check mark, and why not a smiley face to boot. Okay, gang. So I think at this point, whether it's forwards, backwards, up, down, left, right, we know our clays and condensations. So thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next video.